Hey everybody, it's Henry Steele, and today is March 9th, 2021, which makes this the second weekly video for the month of March. Now, in the previous weekly video, I talked about a mathematical method, and I showed it and explained it to you on the Euro-US dollar one-hour chart. Well, I'm going to show you that exact same method, but this time on the Great British Pound US dollar hourly chart, and I'm going to explain it to you a little bit differently so you can understand kind of the origin concept of the idea in and of itself. So you'll understand what I mean here in just a couple of minutes. So last week I recorded the video on March 2nd. So all this is the hourly chart data that has happened since March 2nd. So I'm gonna go ahead and use from this low here and we're gonna go forward a few swings. So basically, the concept in and of itself is that you measure a swing in the market. In this particular market, of course, is the British pound, US dollar, cross pair. We measure, we'll start with this swing, and we find that it's 10 bars or 10 candles long, or 10 hours in this case, since it's the hourly chart. And then what I showed in the previous video was you take that number and then you cube it, which just means you multiply that number by itself and then multiply that number again. So in this instance, it would be 10 times 10 times 10 is cubing just as easily. We could have hit 10 cubed and it calculator does all the work for us there, which is of course a thousand and then the next step is to find the square root of that number cubed, which you just find the square root. So in our case, 10 gives us the number 31.62. So we take that 10, we cube that number, gives us 1,000, and then we find the square root of that 1,000, which gives us 31.62, rounded to the nearest hundredth. Now, after that, we take that 31.6, or 32 rounded, and then we measure from the same starting point and just go to 32 bars, or candles, and then expect a change in trend right around this point in time, which we see we do get here. And there's also typically a change in trend right around the halfway point right here, and we see that it kind of evened out. And it wasn't, this is kind of the slow period for the market right there lower volatility, but there was a bit of a topping right there. Nothing too excessively tradable, but it was there. Okay, so what I'm showing you here, cubing a number and then finding the square root of the number, is identical mathematically to raising a number to the power of 1.5, basically. So here's what I mean. We can use the x raised to y button right here and take that same number 10 push this button and then push 1.5 and then push equals and we get that same number 31.62 so what's happening is we're raising that number by the power of 1.5 essentially so you know the importance, or hopefully by now, if you've been watching my channel for very long, you understand the importance of a 50% increase in price or a 50% segment of time, things like that nature. One half of something is extremely important, and that's where raising something to the power of 1.5, that concept, comes from. So in the previous video, what I did was showed you the long hand of that, essentially, the easy mathematical way around it. Now, obviously, if you don't have a calculator, it becomes a bit harder to do that math, unless, of course, you take the long route, which was to cube the number and then find the square root. But with the advent of technology, we, of course, do have something as simple as these um, scientific calculators here. Windows calculator has it and there's, you know, online you can find many calculators. Most people have cell phones these days and the cell phones have calculators that can do pretty much the same thing. So for the rest of this video, we're going to be using this button since in actuality, that's what we're doing. We're raising it to the power of 1.5. So anyway, there was our first example. Now here, we go from here, 
And we could go right here, but that's only three bars, and I much prefer to get longer than f four to five is like the shortest that I prefer, or prefer to use on an hourly chart. And that's me personally. You are more than welcome to experiment with it and see how things work for you in the markets you trade and the time frames you trade. But three to four is really um, below where I want to be. Five and above, those numbers are what I would use. So anyway, we find 11 here this time. So we can just do 11, 1.5 equals, oh, did not do that properly. There we go, 11 raised to the power of 1.5 equals 36.48, so 36 and a half. So, starting from the same spot right here, going out 36 and a half bars or candles into the future, we're right at this minor top right here. And again, the halfway point is a very, very minor bottom right here. You could actually look at it as a very minor top or a very minor bottom. But because we're dealing with an hourly time frame on a cross pair, currency cross pair, where we're not in a whole lot of volatility, we're not going to get huge swings. Because this swing right from this bottom here to this top right here, that was a bigger swing in what's been going on here. And that was only 100 pips. So these swings aren't going to net you hundreds and hundreds of pips on an hourly chart. But you can still um, scalp yourself a good 5 to 20 20, 25 pips, something like that. Anyway, moving forward, we have this low right here, and then going to this high right there gives us only three bars or candles. So I don't really want to use that. So I'm going to start from this high. I'm just going to skip that minor swing there. Start from this high, and then go to this low, which is six bars or candles. Bring the calculator back up. 6 raised to the power of 1.5 equals approximately 15 rounded. So we just go, it's looking like this bottom right here. So this bottom and then that top right there is the halfway point, as you can clearly see. And then I'll do a couple more here, but I think you get the general idea because like I said, it's the same thing as I was doing last time just mathematically done a little bit differently. More true to the origin concept, I guess you could say. And then right here, we don't want to use this swing because it's only one candle. So I'll go from this high to this low and get seven bars or eight bars or candles. So let's see how that works. Let's do seven. That's 18 and a half, and then let's do eight, which is 22, 23. So 18 and a half takes us right here, which is pretty close to that bottom. And then 22, 23, we're right up here. It's actually 22 and a half, so there's 22, 22 and a half be right up here. So that's pretty close to that top right there also. And then of course the 18 gives us one candle away from this bottom. And then the 22 and a half would be two candles further, one, two. So it'd be at this very minor, well, technically that's the end of a very small triangle. Like I said, Using this on the hourly chart is, especially for the Great British Pound US dollar right here, you're going to get smaller swings. So if you're really looking to pick up some serious pips with a method like this, you're going to want to go out to the four hour to daily chart, things around that level. And some markets, you're going to find that the halfway point works very well. In other markets, you're going to find that it's like, eh, nah, it works decently well. Like I said before, you will have to test this in the market you prefer to trade in the time frame you prefer to trade and then discover the nuances of it for yourself. So 
Anyway, this is Henry Steele, and I will leave this video here, and hopefully you found it a little bit more revealing, at least as to the origin of the concept. So, until next week, I'll talk to you later.